This attack begins with a compromised pair of AWS access keys. The first thing the attacker does is execute the git session token command in order to obtain temporary credentials. This is a form of defense evasion. If the permanent credentials the attacker started with are deleted or disabled, they will still have access to the environment. Next, the attacker gets the username associated with those credentials. The user is called lowpriv. Now, the attacker wants to understand the permissions of this user. They run the command list user policies to see the policies belonging to this lowpriv user, but they do not have permission to run that command. So they try a different command which shows them managed policies for this user. But again, they get an access denied error. Finally, they attempt to run the list groups for users command, but are denied again. Instead of resorting to a brute force attack to obtain the permissions, the attacker first checks for access to the account's event history. Using the credentials they already obtained, they check for access to CloudTrail logs using the lookup events command. A successful output means the compromised user has read-only permissions to the CloudTrail logs. To understand what they can accomplish with this compromised user, they search CloudTrail events for that user name. We see this user ran the assume role command. This is the default region of this user, and this is the role that they assumed, Lambda Creator. The role session name was random session. Underneath that, you can see the role ARN. The attacker copies that to later assume the role. But first, the attacker checks all of the events that this Lambda creator role did in that session. The first event was update function configuration on a function called automation update SSM param. The second event was update function code on that same function. The attacker now runs the STS assume role command to escalate their privileges to this Lambda creator role. Once they move laterally to the new role, they try the git function command. Access denied means they cannot access the function's code or environmental variables. So they will turn to a form of social engineering. They Google this function's name and find an AWS walkthrough, which states that the role attached to this Lambda has permissions for Amazon SSM full access, meaning, if the attacker gains access to this role, they can easily abuse it, move laterally, and escalate their privileges. The walkthrough then shows that the AWS name for this function is identical to the name in the victim's account. This is a common mistake users make, defining resource names exactly as AWS defines them in their examples. Now, if we scroll down, we see the actual code of the function. The fact that it uses Python and that it uses BOTO3 library. Remember that there were two permissions we saw the Lambda creator role use. Abusing update function code involves changing the function's code to be malicious and retrieving environmental variables through a reverse shell. But changing the code could break the functionality of the function and alert the victim of an attacker's presence. So the better alternative is using the update function configuration permission to inject a malicious Lambda layer to the function, which would not affect the function's functionality at all. The code of Lambda layers is stored separately from the rest of the function. These layers can be shared cross account. First, the attacker creates the malicious layer in their own AWS account. They insert malicious code into a BOTO3 library. When the Lambda function is invoked, it will use this altered BOTO3 library instead of the default one. This malicious code will result in the Lambda sending all its environment's variables to the attacker's IP, which include the STS token of the function's role. The attacker will make this malicious layer publicly available. Then, switching to the victim's account, the attacker will run the update function configuration command to insert the malicious backdoor layer. From the output, we see the injection was successful. The attacker waits for the function to be invoked and sets up a listener on port 4433. Once invoked, the attacker will receive all of the function environment parameters. We see the access key ID, secret access key, and session token. Together, these comprise the STS token of the function's role. Once again, the attacker can impersonate this, move laterally, and escalate their privileges. In this new role, they have SSM full access permission. 
they will repeat their previous technique of looking at CloudTrail to list the history events, this time related to the SSM service. One of the events is SSM Start Session API Call. This will start a connection to an EC2 instance. The attacker copies the instance target ID. They take the STS token from before and start a session to that target ID. They can log in to that EC2 instance. From there, they will search for metadata service. By default, it is found under this IP. They extract the EC2 instance's role name, DynamoDB Full Access. Users often name roles based on their permissions, which makes the attacker's job easier. The name states that the role has full access to DynamoDB. The role name is added to the query and the metadata service will output its STS token. From within the EC2 instance, they list the DynamoDB tables. Because the EC2 has DynamoDB full access, they can scan the table and this reveals sensitive customer information like name, phone number, email, and last four digits of credit card numbers. Now, how will the attacker exfiltrate this information? One option is to use the EC2 role STS token outside of the instance environment, but this can be easily detected as suspicious behavior. A more covert option is DNS or NTP tunneling. The attacker uses NTP, which AWS frequently uses to sync the clocks of instances over the network. This allows the attacker to exfiltrate the data relatively silently and under the radar. On the right side, you see the attacker's machine listening on UDP port 123. On the left is the EC2 instance from earlier. The attacker puts all the sensitive data in the file data.txt. They connect to the attacker's machine and transfer the file. All of the sensitive data is successfully exfiltrated to the attacker. When we investigate this attack in CloudGuard, there will be multiple relevant alerts within the time frame of the attack. The first alert is permission scan attempt executed by CLI. When I click to investigate, you see all the commands executed by the attacker from the CLI. List users policies, list groups for user, list attached users policies. The git session token command also prompts this alert. The last command executed in this list was assume role, where the attacker moved from the original low priv role to the lambda creator role. Next, we take all the tokens from this event and create a new query, searching for CloudTrail logs with these tokens. In the logs, the assume role commands response has another token to add to this query. This reveals more actions taken by the attacker once they moved laterally to a new role. Specifically, the update function configuration call, which was run on the automation update SSM param function, listed here under target name. Back in the alerts list, we see that there are two alerts related to this entity. The first is Lambda configuration update. The second is Lambda layer was added from an external account. Click to investigate and open the logs. There is an update function configuration event with no known identity. The logs show that a backdoor layer was inserted from a completely different AWS account. From the same view, we also see an assume role command. The attacker escalated their privileges to the Lambda SSM role. We copy the access key ID of the role and insert it into the same query. There were several alerts generated for this role as well. The first is abuse of access token generated by STS dedicated for Lambda. We investigate and go to the logs. There is a start session call from an external source with a Kali Linux user agent. Therefore, this was not initiated from the Lambda function itself. Most importantly, the start session call requests an ID which we can copy. We search for this ID, and this reveals two alerts. First is an alert called Suspicious NTP Packets Volume Per Session. This malformed NTP traffic was the attacker exfiltrating the data. Here, we see the connection. In the Statistics tab, we really see the uptick in the traffic. The other alert utilizes machine learning to do anomaly detection of network traffic. Let's investigate and look at the GSL editor to understand what we are looking at. This concerns the asset ID we found. 
The protocol is TCP or protocol six. The destination is external and we see port 443 indicating a change of traffic behavior. This is caused by the web socket communication that is triggered by the start session command. The communication of the web socket is seen on the right. In the statistics tab, we see a pretty active traffic trend with ups and downs. However, the start session action causes a significant enough uptick to be deemed an anomaly. Altogether, all of these events indicate an incident. Throughout the course of the investigation, we followed the token. This allowed us to see the entire attack from beginning to end. From the low priv user, the move to automation update SSM param, to start session with the SSM role. This can be seen visually as well in this graph.